Well, she may be the most uh, talked about potential Republican presidential candidate, but Sarah Palin comes in third in a hypothetical horse race for the 2012 GOP nomination. According to a new CNN poll, 24% of Republicans say they would support former Arkansas governor and 2008 candidate Mike Huckabee. 20% shows Mitt Romney, who of course also ran 20 in uh, 2008. Sarah Palin was third with 15% followed by Newt Gingrich and Ron Paul. Let's talk more raw politics now behind the poll and what's already shaping up to be an interesting midterm election race and eventual presidential race. We're joined again by David Gergen, Candy Crowley, John King, Ed Rollins, and, and Roland Martin. So, John, I mean, it, it's obviously a crowded field at this point, and that poll is just kind of a silly snapshot two years out from a presidential race. Um, wh what do you take away from it, though? I mean, clearly there's no single front runner. Uh, and that's the thing you take away from it. The Republican Party has no single national leader at the moment. This, whether this will have any impact on 2012 is way down the road. Let's get through the 2010 midterms. How successful the Republicans are this November will say a lot about what the party is looking for heading into the next cycle. But it tells you that George W. Bush is gone. Dick Cheney is gone, John McCain is back in the Senate, and you have a handful of Republicans who are in the 20% ballpark, most of them people who have been on the national stage recently. Newt Gingrich, the former speaker, Sarah Palin, Romney, and Huckabee all involved in the last campaign. No singular presence right now. Now, many in the party, and this would be a good question for Ed, think that's a good thing because it allows a debate about ideas and a philosophy and emphasis, and then you figure it out by this November, and then you go into the next cycle. Well, more than November. I mean, Mike Huckabee was sitting at 1% uh, three years ago, right, today. And obviously, the course of the debates and the Iowa, winning the Iowa caucuses uh, uh, mattered. And obviously, he gave him the, the front-runner status. I, I remember going out with Mike Huckabee, I think it was right after Iowa. I mean, it, he had basically a driver. It was a driver in him. He had this, like, young guy driving had, him he around. A, he had a driver and a bunch of young kids yeah. who, uh, who asked me one time, what was it like in the old days? And I said, like, what, before Blackberries? And they said, oh, no, I mean, we, we don't, <laughs> don't want to go back that far. <laughs> uh, Yikes. We don't have a front runner. For the first time in my lifetime or David's lifetime, I've been around Republican politics for a long time. There is no, there is no front runner. Romney is getting organized. He knows how to win or buy straw polls. Uh, he was out there with his evangelicals. For Mitt, uh, he wasn't there. But you know, he's got to turn it into can he win some caucuses and some, and some conventions and some delegates uh, and then some states. Uh, is I, he I, running differently this time than he yes, did? Yes, he's definitely running differently this time. Uh, you know, I think to a certain extent he won't flip flop as much as he did last time. And he'll try and basically be more compatible with the other candidates. I mean, uh, before he, in 2008, he was basically running as, as a, you know, consistent conservative, to, to, right. to borrow J.D. Hayworth. Well, he, he thought phrase. he was going to be the conservative candidate. you got to remember, the guy who was leading all the polls last time was Rudy Giuliani. He was, uh, you know, right up, right up. Which shows you how important polls are. Right. That's exactly right. right. At this, at this stage of the race. Of you know, it's interesting. We were talking about Mike Huckabee. I, I really thought Huckabee would be further along. I remember after the campaign. Uh, and I were talking about how Huckabee had a strategy where he wanted to have an opportunity to really be this leader of the social conservative movement. Uh, and that really hasn't transpired. He, Mike, Mike has never had money. He got an opportunity to have a TV show. Uh, he's now moved to Florida. Uh, and uh, he's, registered, he's building a house down there. Uh, uh, he's told me he does not want to run in 2012. Uh, you know, he, he's going to wait until after the 2010, but there's, there's no efforts being made to get ready for another election. Uh, Dave, David, we've got a text 360 question I want to put to you. Jeffrey Haas in Bloomington, Indiana wants to know, is there any room for moderates and moderation in politics anymore? And we were talking about the Republicans and Tea Parties earlier. They're, they're getting closer. To, I mean, does a moderate Republican candidate stand a chance in the 2012 primary? It's going to be hard, but there are some moderate candidates coming along and uh, in several states. I'm here in Massachusetts. A fellow named Charlie Baker is running for the uh, for the governorship, he's very moderate. He's sort of the northeastern kind of voice. So you see more Charlie Bakers around the country, and he's doing very well, by the way. Um, but I want to come back to the Sarah Palin point. Uh, yeah, she's red hot out on the speaking circuit. She's got a fierce following. She made twelve million dollars so far. This year. Yeah, yeah, so I, and 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 it's going to go mm -hmm. higher. I think she's probably made over twenty since she left the governorship. Uh, uh, but this poll suggests that there's a ceiling. What's striking here is that nationally. 69% of the people in this poll said she was not qualified to be president. Only 30% said she was qualified. Her ratings in that number are actually lower than the Tea Party's. Uh, and and it, so it's, it, I think it's, uh, I think John and, and, uh, uh, and Ed are both right that there's no front runner, but it's also pretty clear that she's not going to become a front runner, and I'm among those who don't think she's going to run. Let me just give a counterpoint. As long as we still start in Iowa and we go to New Hampshire, we go to South Carolina, we don't run a national election, we run state by state, she can walk in there when everybody else is getting 50 people, 25 people doing coffee clutches. She walks in on day one and she's got 5,000, 10,000 people anywhere in Iowa. 
Uh, she can attract a big audience. There's a great, a great fascination. She's got two years to basically do some homework and get to be more substantive. And it's not winning a national election at this point in time. It's winning a state, winning a caucus. So if she wants to run, uh, you know, she'll have the money. She doesn't have any operatives. She doesn't want any operatives. Uh, yeah, but I think, but, but I think Ed, you're but foolish. But she's not a noob. She, I, I, well, I agree with that. But I, 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 yeah, I think you're right about Iowa. But wouldn't you also agree that she's pretty well known now? A lot of people have made up their minds about her sure, one she's, way or the she's, other she's, as a candidate. Sure, but you and I both worked for a guy by the name of Richard Nixon, who was dead and gone so many times. And as they said, he had a, he had the, the, the hard-ass poker uh, sit there and wait your cards. Uh, <laughs> and I think to a certain extent, I don't think Palin is, is Nixon, obviously. But I, but I do think there is a silent majority out there that loves her. Uh, I think she speaks to them. And, and Candy, we'll see. Candy we'll do see. you think she has that, that fire in the belly? You know, I, I'm kind of with, uh, look, who knows? It's a long who time knows? between now and when they start to declare. I'm kind of with David. I think uh, that she is, in, somebody, when I was down at the Southern uh, Republican Leadership Conference, somebody said to me, I think she wants to be a kingmaker, not the king. Mm -hmm. I think she likes to drive the debate. I think she likes to, to uh, you know, she is right up there in the face of the president. They love that. Uh, I don't, I, she's also making bank. I mean, she is uh, making a lot of money. <laughs> money. Uh, and I think she's enjoying the role she's got. Yeah, the speaking contract, which I guess the details of it were fished out of a dumpster. Who did that? I have no idea. But uh, uh, apparently uh, private jets to the speaking engagements, uh, you know, obviously nice hotel rooms and bendable straws. Not sure what that's about. Cute Kanye West, the good life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, John King, do, do, you think, uh, do you think she has that, that I mean, the desire to, to be president? I, I can't answer that question unless you send me a bendable straw. Um, uh, Look, she, she, there were some things about the last campaign she loved, which was she proved herself a big draw. As Ed said, she brings a big crowd. She brought energy to the McCain campaign. She loved being out on the road. She loved that energy. Most good politicians do. They thrive on the energy of campaigning, and they grow, and they get energy from it. She didn't like the media. She didn't like the way she was treated by the McCain campaign staff. So she came out of that with some pluses, some minuses. At the moment, if you look at the numbers, at the moment, She's a weak candidate against President Obama, and she's not the strongest candidate in the Republican field. But again, we are talking six months from a midterm election. If the Republicans win big, the dynamic will change. She yeah. has plenty of time to make that decision. She can raise money. She would have a grassroots organization. Among all the people considering running, Romney's already out there running, but, but the, those with the infrastructure and those with the grassroots yeah. support can wait the longest, and she is one of them. Got to leave it there. Uh, John King, Candy Crowley, David Gergen, Roland Martin, Ed Rollins, thanks very much.